over a homeless man. Maybe he just got the Johnny Five enormous killer robot Johnny Fives. I'd go back to the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I'd get it written into the <laughs> document. He's asleep at the wheel. A little, so overpowered, so well built. Like and the motion. Yeah. Oof, this is a, a challenging way to attack someone. Today we're watching The Terminator. How did you like this film? I give The Terminator an 8 out of 10. I think it was a great sci-fi movie from the 80s. Great experience, classic moments, edge of your seat thriller thing. Uh, it's got that great 80s feel. I thought Arnold was amazing as the Terminator in this movie. Um, it's a terrifying idea of a relentless robot that just will not stop until you die or it dies. It's just absolutely terrifying. Uh, the acting was great, in my opinion. Um, some of the special effects, however, do kind of look a little dated. I mean, it is from 1984, you know, some of the stop motion. But overall, it's a solid science fiction movie, scary, 80s, time travel, 8 out of 10 for me. What do you think? I'm a little bit harsher. I gave it a 7 out of 10. There are some things that I don't like a little bit, but for the most part, it's a good time. It's a millennial classic. And it just reminds me of my youth, Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor is there. She's a strong female science fiction protagonist. Back back in the day, we already had strong female leads. Um, it helps solidify Arnold when he said that I'll be back. One of his most famous lines, uh, most iconic lines he's ever done. Good, excellent sci-fi. Robot wars, spy infiltration to people you can't tell if they're human, they're not human. There's time travel involved. Excellent sci-fi. Things to, to ponder about, things to think about, things to maybe a little bit worry about cons the cons is it is an old movie so the stop animation is a bit dated it looks good it looks creepy it looks eerie but also modern cg can can make this look much nicer and also the modern audience it's a bit more sophisticated i think people would see things in this in this 80s film and say like why why why, why would they do this um i think the modern audiences and, and moviegoers just have a little bit more logic under their belts and also the movie is like 70% chasing. Chasing is a super fun, but it's movies like almost all chasing. Um, but other than that, super fun, seven out of 10, still a movie that I would watch multiple times again. So here is the beginning, the intro text. The machines rose from the ashes of a nuclear war. Their war to exterminate mankind and raged for decades, but the final battle would not be fought in the future. It would be fought here in our present tonight. So super cool intro. Just enough to get you teased into what's going on. But what I thought about this is, is the robots have been fighting humans for decades. Like humans are pretty easy to kill. Like <laughs> what, are the, what are these robots doing? Like why, why, why are they so bad at killing humans? All right. And you think of all the advantages that robots have with like perfect aim and metal yep. skeletons and metal mass production and intelligence beyond what we have. Like, well, what's the problem? What's the problem? And then you think about the disadvantages that humans have, like, Humans are bags of blood. You bleed out, you die. Like, 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 yeah, humans can do amazing things. Like, like if you get an illness, you can cure yourself. It's not just broken part, you'll throw it away. If you have like a broken bone, it'll heal itself. You're not just like broken leg, it's done. But that's like slowly over time. Like humans are very susceptible to like quick damage. Quick damage, you get knocked unconscious and then you drown or something. Like, like humans are easy to kill. I don't understand why these robots are struggling, struggling for decades. Decades, yeah. Because you take you take the arm off of a, you know, a model one hundred and one, it's fine. It's, it's it can fine. still aim well with its other arm. You rip right. an arm off a human, pretty much nope. done. Nope. Like even if you survive, even if you're not bleeding out, you're like still off the front lines for like I don't know a month. So like I'm like rehab and like mm-hmm. humans are super fragile. All right, the robots can single arm a rifle. That's right. We can't single arm a rifle. So their advantages just seem wobbly. so... Yeah, we'd be all wobbly. It's too much mass, way too far out. Yeah. So yeah, decades, I don't get it. how bad are the robots? Unclear. How bad, how bad are the robots? How afraid should we be? Uh, unclear. Maybe but, humans have some unknown advantages that we're unaware of. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. maybe, maybe we'll maybe. think about I don't, it. I don't see it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I definitely don't have advantage <laughs> advantages of muscle. Arnold's looking great. Arnold looking, looking thick. <laughs> I mean, the legendary chest of Arnold. God damn. I would submit to his rule. Just chest like that, sure. <laughs> I'm your servant. Yeah. And then he's like, I don't, I don't mind that I'm naked. I'm just going to look over the landscape of, or the hellscape of Los Angeles right now. Mm. Which, there, he's right now in Griffith's Observatory. What a weird scene. Because... 
these hoodlums here, or whatever they are, have to walk up to Griffith's Observatory, which is a hike. And then they're just up there looking over the city with the binoculars Wait, or with for, the for monocular. An, for, the, for the not LA people, what is Griffith's Observatory? It is, let's just go to the left here. It is this. It's this okay. observatory that's up on the hill that they were old telescopes that were used as an observatory and is now a museum. So it's like a, it's like a you can like, drive up there, the but it's like a 40 guys. minute hike. That's right. These these hoodlums, these like street yeah, yeah. guys, the, these gangsters, <laughs> one of these wannabe gangsters, they took like a 40 minute hike. They took a 40 minute hike up the hill to like actually one of the most romantic places in LA. Right. So these guys cannot be that tough. They must be wannabes, which is why they suddenly pull knives on Arnold. Or sorry, That's on right. the, the no, Terminator. I mean, yeah. I mean, why are they doing this? In Griffith's Observatory, funny. looking for a knife fight with it's a like naked a guy. Place. <laughs> public place, well lit, nighttime. They're like, let's knife him. <laughs> but I guess that's yeah. the point. That's the point. Like, they're wannabes, and so they have to, like, prove themselves. So they're, like, they're mm -hmm. more willing to do, like, dangerous, unnecessary, risky stuff. That's right. So they see a muscular, naked guy walking toward them, and their <laughs> go-to is switchblade knives. Is that's that what those yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah weird scene. What, a, what an interesting scene. But cool though. I'm like, I would if I was a naked robot man, I'd go there. So I this have. was this was crazy. Dude. This is this is when Kyle Reeves drops in, and LA is some crazy. Shit. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Hey, I said hold it. First chase scene. So, so, hold on, I gotta stop right there. Is he, the cops are chasing Kyle Reese because they he just had sex with a homeless guy, in their opinion, in their view? <laughs> right? Yeah, that, yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, so he's like, he's like hovering over a homeless man. Maybe he just got <laughs> off. He's pulling up his pants and they're like, stop it, stop, come back here. How did they know that wasn't consensual? That's right. Do homeless guys getting it on? Like, that's not illegal, is it? Especially when one's super jacked. Yeah, super fit? Yeah, super fit. Yeah, let them, let them, <laughs> like, whatever, chill out. Yeah, what is the problem? And then they, they're they like, it's it's public indecency. Get him! Let's track him. Hold it right there. Hey, I said hold it! <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. What day is it? The date? 12th, May, Thursday. What year? That would be weird. Some guy takes yeah. your gun and he's like, what? what's the date? And you're what's like, the uh, date? What? Okay, not only that, but can you imagine, can you imagine what it would be like to like be running in the streets in night in LA and it's like the streets are dirty and you're barefoot? In can the 80s being, when everything was dirty? Right. No, no, thank you. Look, 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 look. Can you can you zoom around? Like, yep. he's barefoot. Yep, yep. Yeah, no, thank you. Barefoot. No, thank you. Like, like right what's here. what's what's going on with future humans? Such their feet are so calloused that they can be barefoot in the streets of L.A. in the eighties. Just not a problem. He didn't get he didn't even get any drugs, any needles up in his feet. What is that? What's going on in the future? I mean, in the future, they have a tough life. Shoes may be prioritized for the soldiers to when they go out on their sorties or whatever you call them. So people walking around those bunkers maybe don't have shoes, so they're all calloused up. Yeah, and so maybe. even though Kyle Kyle Reeves is a soldier, he's just like, when I get home, I take off my boots, I hand them off to the next guy. Oh, actually, this kind of makes sense. Hand off my that boots to the next sense. person so they can go and do combat. And at home, I'm barefoot, like Asians. <laughs> getting, getting calluses god damn it that's not what i wanted he's at home he's barefoot getting calluses now he's ready to run yeah i mean i mean it must be because his feet would be jacked nope no good yeah Whew. oh so dirty oh no thank so you. dirty yeah Ugh. also i want to point out so he takes the homeless guy's pants mm -hmm. and i want to make note Throughout the movie, he never gets rid of the homeless guy's pants. Oh, he wears really? them he the whole them. time. 
the whole time. He keeps the same pair. Oh. So this homeless guy is probably, they're probably smelly and dirty and gross, maybe with urine all over him. Who knows what? He keeps them the whole time. He has plenty of opportunities to get new pants. He never does. I guess maybe he, maybe he did screw this guy because he doesn't want to give up that memory. That's right. It's uh, coated with both of their (laughs) It's it's a little souvenir for him. There are some suspicious stains. Suspicious stains. That's that dark j- <laughs> The dark j- has been <laughs> has been held up for a while. Okay, but maybe he doesn't realize that they stink because, like, he's from the future and they live in those like bunkers and everything's kind of nasty in there. Maybe I to mean, him, these are just normal pants. I mean, there are smells that I've experienced where you can go nose blind, and then there are smells where it just never goes away. Yeah, you cannot ignore it. He's, we're literally behind dumpsters here. Yeah, fortunately, when you're in the presence of dumpsters, the homeless man cum pants are pretty okay. Pretty okay, yeah. I yeah. mean, maybe he kept the pants clean for just this moment when a time-traveling ripped guy would come upon him. Then a fresh blast. It smells like those trees. What are those trees called? The ones that smell like cum? What you know what I'm talking trees. about. Yeah, exactly. I don't know it's what, a North American thing. Is there any arborists in the audience? Please let us if you're a, if you are an arm if you're an amateur arborist, please let us know which trees smell like cum. The one down I mean, the I'll comments. go pro. Please I'll go pro. Us. I'll go pro. Yeah. Professional. Pro arborist. If you're a sommelier, you can understand wine and <laughs> smells. Let us know in the comments. Okay. <laughs> Summary: LA is crazy. Blend. So this is wild. I mean, okay, I'm a millennial, and I grew up when we had phone books. But why did we have phone books? I mean, talk about the stalker handbook. What the <laughs> hell? That's right. Everybody's... Like, all you need to know is their first name, last name. You can find out where their like name and address. And their, I guess you already know their name. You can find out their address and their phone number. Right. And it's just publicly available at every phone booth. And it comes to your door every year or whatever it was. That's like, right. What were we doing? Actually, you think the, uh, yeah, the, the more internet think age it, is insecure. The more, <laughs> the more I think about it, the worse it gets. Because like... This was fixed to your locality. Like, if you ever moved, then this makes no sense. Like, this this book, your entry in this book makes mm-hmm. no sense. Like, That's we right. are, when we, I've had the same phone number I've had since for like 20 years or whatever. Like, our, yeah. our numbers are more attached to us now than they are with this book. So, mm-hmm. why would we make a book that is impermanent? It changes every year. That's why they send a new one every year. Because it will get out of date. That's just, just, just pouring but, away trees. Just, just, trees. just pouring just, away trees. Yeah, it's so weird that that was a thing. So weird. But at the same time, there's that cute girl in third grade, a stalker. (laughs) Figure out a family name. (laughs) (laughs) And then, so the Terminator is able to find Sarah Connor based on the phone book. If we didn't have phone books, he wouldn't have been able to find it. There's no internet back then. What if the, the... The T-101 Arnold, he didn't consider that Sarah Connor might have actually been born Richard Connor. He should be hunting everyone. I mean... That's true because what if she changed gender? Or maybe she was born Richard Connor and then later changed to Sarah Connor. Yeah, she T one oh one should be hunting everyone. Wait, 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 wait! If she is going to get pregnant with exactly. John Connor, she would have to uh-huh. start female and transition to male. She couldn't. He, oh, she yeah. couldn't start male, transition to female, right? I'm a physicist. I don't know. Just... So she could start out as Sarah. And then change her name to Richard, and he skips over that's right. Richard Connor. Ah, that's right. And at this point in time, T101 doesn't know if Sarah has transitioned to Richard yet. So Richard Connor mm-hmm. could actually be the one that gives birth to to John Connor. That's right. And also mm. the robots are bigots, so they don't think f- about bigots. that. Goddamn robots. Mm-hmm. So phone book nullified. Jesus. This movie has a sour taste in my mouth now. Okay, so this is for the audience safety. I don't care how big your he- your hair is; it's still not a helmet. Wear a helmet. Yeah, wear, wear a helmet. Always wear, wear a, helmet. a helmet. Even on these little moped thingies, which are super dangerous because you have a false sense of security, wear a helmet. It's all the danger with no sex appeal. You're still traveling thirty five mm-hmm. miles per hour, thirty miles per hour ahead, hitting a wall. No good. Wear a helmet. No good. Wear a helmet. At least wear a helmet. Mm-hmm. You should be wearing all the other padding as well. Yeah, but at least helmets. wear a helmet. With a jaw guard. Three helmets? Oh, yeah. The most likely place for your head to hit the ground is right on your chin. So wear a full face helmet. At least a modular one that like pops up, pulls down. Mm-hmm. 
Yep, safety first. Super dangerous, but at the same time, the 80s was super not dangerous. Look how look at the utopia this place is. Like, look at that. How do I know? Look, she's got her scooter locked up to a tree mm-hmm. with this super flimsy chain. Like, this chain doesn't cut it in 2023 because you could cut it in 2023. This is like a quick, easy, like lock picking lawyer just chomp with the with the bolt cutters. This thing's gone. Look how nice it must have been to live back then. I mean, bolt cutters existed in the 80s. People just were like, this is why, why would I do crime? Why do you do crime? This is somebody's. They locked it up for a reason. Oh, yeah. But today, if you have like a really crappy bicycle that barely works, and you, you lock it up with this chain, it's gone by the end of the day. I've had I've had two bikes stolen. It's frustrating. Yep. So, wow. And then the slack she gives this. <laughs> That's she right. She doesn't lock it right up to the tree. So like, like, so it's, what is it? It's, you're supposed to chain your object to something that's heavy and immovable and like really tight. Because the more right. slack you give your chain, the more you could wrap something around on it and then you could exert <laughs> torque and rip it apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, this is like cosmetic safety. That's right. Yeah. So it's good time to be alive. Preventing the, like the, the worst, the most opportunistic criminal. That's all it's pre- right. present, preventing right now. Like the laziest criminal that's like, eh. <laughs> this is basically paper mache, but a chain. Like, ah, eh, forget it. I think that means in the modern world we have uh, very organized criminals because they actually have to go around prepared for the different locking mechanisms. That's right. Uh, Whereas organized, intelligent, skillful, they've honed their craft. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Everyone levels up. This is a cool scene. This is, in my opinion, I mean, I've shot guns for like i don't know dozens of hours and i don't know maybe like high dozens and i've handled quite a few weapons and this i think this is the most perfect weapon i've ever seen off gauge auto loader the uzi nine millimeter you know your mm-hmm. weapons buddy any one of these is ideal for home defense that's what i'm using it for 45 long yep. slide with laser siding this this, this, this thing the beam comes on and you put the red dot where you want the bullet to go oh that's it this. does it does everything. Let, let, yeah, let's zoom in and look at it slowly. So it's like a handgun, but yeah. it also has this like zoom scopey guy that also has like a laser in it. And so mm-hmm. like it covers the short range and the long range and mm-hmm. it's like easily reloadable and maneuverable. You can get around corners with it. Like I see, mm-hmm. I mean, this is this is just the perfect gun. Like, it covers everything. Yeah, absolutely perfect gun. And look at that scope. That thing is gonna be able to zoom in. Mm-hmm. So if you have someone that's close to you, short range, perfect. A handgun, super maneuverable. Mm-hmm. Something one that's far away, like perfect. You got this scope that like zooms super far away, mm-hmm. like any target, any range, not a problem. Mm-hmm. Super perfect for the Terminator because his accuracy level is so high. You get mm-hmm. portability, accuracy, mm-hmm. long range. And uh, on his, and the T one hundred's got T one one. He's got one, this like model, cool model grip where he like holds it tightly with his left hand and just just fingers the trigger with his right hand Mm. and it has this laser sight cool super cool like this coaxial laser sight like wherever you see with your Mm -hmm. optic with your with your with your scope is the same exact laser line it's not like offset to the Mm -hmm. side Mm. yeah so you can look down the scope with your portable pistol and you get confirmation about where it's going to hit based on the laser yeah. I wonder also I wonder if the laser is actually taking into account the drop of the bullet and the wind. You can like dial it right in and dial the the laser onto where it's gonna hit. I suspect so, not. I suspect that the laser and the optics just go straight and then the bullet does the arch the archy stuff. Mm-hmm. But you're saying like you could have these these knobs you like tick 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 and then it like adjusts for elevation and windage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you could tick, tick, tick the laser too, so you could see exactly where you're hitting. Hmm. All in a pistol. Perfect. That'd be a pistol. Yeah, perfect. You can just fit it in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Oh, and look at that. Do you see that on the bottom left of this picture? That's the front sight. Little, little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't so it's also got short range, short range aiming. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't understand yeah. why this isn't mass produced. This looks like oh. everything you need a gun to be. Yeah. Agreed. Why isn't this mass produced? Perfect for home defense, like the guy said. Mm-hmm. But that was the mm-hmm. UZ. But still, this is perfect for home defense. Also, yeah, especially if you got like a, <laughs> like a mansion. Like, how, how big is your home? You need a scope to get to the other side. I mean, you never know. That's right. You don't have to use the scope, you know. That's true. You have the 
you have the other sites. Yeah, I mean, it does the you can just look if you're close or close enough, just look straight down the. Okay, yeah, yeah. You, you're looking down the cylinder, and the cylinder is pointing yeah. with the thing you want to pop. Yep, I love it. Love it. Perfect weapon. This was interesting. So in the future, uh, this is their tactics for taking out the, I don't know, the robots that sort of stand up on their treads. The Johnny Five walkers, yeah. The Johnny Five, enormous killer robot Johnny Fives. It's rolling. So intimidating, so scary. So scary. Grenade, grenade out. Perfect throw. She throws. Done. Good throw. But dead. So great throw. He hits the treads. I'm not sure how replicable that is because <laughs> it's hard to hit stuff like that in a chaotic environment. Also, are there tactics good? Like I'm looking at this right here. They're running out in the open. These are warm-blooded mm -hmm. creatures. They're just glowing in IR. That's right. I guess, do we know that the robots can see in infrared? I think later in the movie, they mentioned that they can see an IR. But wouldn't they want to see in everything? Like, yeah, right. Humans are constrained to visual light, right? Light the optical spectrum, yeah. The optical spectrum. And if we're well equipped, we can get night vision. So that's some IR frequencies. But a robot would be like, can I, can I get all of it? I want. <laughs> yeah, 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 why not? <laughs> Just install want... another module of whatever sensors you can. In fact, you can make install yeah. modules for every type of sensor possible. Just anything. Anything. So that's talking sound at intensities and frequencies that the human can't hear. Just all mm -hmm. of them. Both both in higher frequency and lower frequency. Just right, to the everything. point where you're like, you're like listening for seismic activity, which is another vibration. Heck, heck, you could even listen for like where are the rodents and then where are they not. If they're not there, then maybe uh, humans are there. That's right, because like they're eating them all. Right. That's right. You could do a smell, lots of smells, like hone in on human feces and urine. I mean, yeah. If it's like, like humans oh, produce scents and then and then if robots are like, oh yeah, that's a human yeah, right there, like yeah. stink. Right. They look for the stank and then they mm. listen for the vibrations and the sound mm. and the speaking. And then they also look for IR signatures and radio i mean definitely if they're doing radio communication here they could definitely sense that hmm. um yeah so given that information are these tactics good i mean gosh it's the best you got you gotta get in mm -hmm. close to throw these these grenades mm -hmm. uh, onto the tracks of the johnny mm -hmm. five walkers so i guess the best thing you can do is sneak around right um, so i guess the, the johnny five walker can't see them but they did show this uh this thing Ooh, these flying guys and I mean, it's going to see you. And it's not like a human and a flying guy who has to like focus on different things. They just do a widespread sensor sweep and look at all the different IR signals, send that out to the Johnny Five units. He knows where everything is. How, how could yeah. the human stand a chance? I guess, I guess, gosh, given those constraints that if I'm ever out in the open, like this flying guy is going to be like, oh, the glowing thing, that's a human. That's a human. The best thing that I could do is make like, you know, those like, like balsa wood airplanes, like you throw them and they glide pretty far. Oh, attach yeah, yeah. a bomb to that yeah like because then it's room temperature it's whatever so you're like, you're like gliding bombs down like 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 down from a football stadium hoping that'll hit i guess that's, that's yeah, these that's little tiny little tiny bombs and you just send in this fleet of balsa pew, wood, pew, pew, pew. Balsa wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so scary i'm still not seeing it how they got one johnny five and the robots are cranking them out Robots are cranking them out, and it takes you know sixteen or so years to get a person functional for war. And if you push it, maybe ten, but they're not going to yeah. be really Dep -dep depending on their roles. Yeah, yeah, because they're not going to get a leadership until later in life. And I mean, and if you roll them out too early, they'll make a mistake, and then ten years lost. Like That's difficult. Right. I, don't, I just and then would the would the, the robots hovercraft. miss? Yeah. So I see what the human's missing. He's got all this vibration to deal with. Bouncing around. Like, can't, you can't aim it. It just doesn't have yeah. the control. But the robot flying thing is just 
It knows its orientation. It knows exactly what's going on. It knows exactly where it is. It has microsecond probably reflexes. It would just be locked in, right? Yeah, why isn't it not just dialed in and it's all ding, 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 shoot the right person at the right timing because it has all right. the processing power and it can control. Like it doesn't have to deal with the ground exactly as you said. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. And, I mean, gosh. I mean, this is, this is quite a miss because they have... Their reflexes are just incredibly fast. So if the movements of the, I mean, I imagine if it's like computers today, the movements of the craft are on the order of seconds. And yeah. this thing's sub millisecond. Calculations, yeah. Calculations. How could it be meters off? Oh boy. Uh, gosh. So I guess, I guess maybe let's attack this question from the human perspective mm -hmm. so for humans it's a good thing that we make mistakes like it's it's somehow nature likes it like like i i think of this in terms of basketball players like in principle a basketball player should have 100 percent free throw rating like sure when you're younger like you're mm -hmm. figuring it out but eventually you just dial in your bottom mechanics and you do the same shot every time it should be perfect right but humans mm -hmm. don't do that um, you you miss and and it's something about like it's advantageous for people to have slight variations and stuff because when you make mistakes sometimes you learn something new and it gets better so maybe we've programmed something like this into the robots where they have like okay. like hyper precision but then also some some variation modulator that masks the entire calculation so they can do random stuff sometimes I don't know I'm filling in blanks maybe maybe there's some big advantage to making mistakes because it is weird that like we have this basketball player he's the best three-point shooter ever from the same just from what 10 meters away from a basketball mm -hmm. hoop that's really not that far mm -hmm. he can make it 50 percent of the time like how terrible is it? it's just such a terrible hit rate i, I it's, mean it's, it's great compared to other humans but it's still 50 percent. like it's not 50%. like dialed in like a machine right and he's been practicing this his whole life why can't it just be like boop every time? Boop, boop, boop. Close my eyes. Boop, boop, boop. So is there an advantage to being that inaccurate all the time? And then we put it into the robots. So that's why they're missing. Maybe. I don't Maybe. know. I, gosh, I don't know why. I mean, I would just I would just make a robot that hits. Right, especially if it's wartime. It's like, okay, this is mistake time. Dial in mistakes. And this is like kill time. No mistakes. No mistakes. Just hit them. Kill them. Get the shot. Right. We don't need to be yeah. missing by like two or three meters here. This is the guy. So weird. This is the shot. May oh gosh. Maybe it's to make them scared so that they run home, but then but then they kill them. But they actually already got the vector. That's right. They want to go I mean I I can imagine missing on purpose because if I'm trying to get someone to lead me to their base, mm -hmm. but then they do shoot them and they do kill them. So then what was the point of missing earlier? That's right. And if you wanted to follow him to the base, you get a high altitude flying guy to just IR right. sensor the, the the engine. You got the engine and the two people inside. You just right. follow them without shooting them. You just you just go high enough such that the humans can't hear your engines anymore. That's right. And it's all there's fog and dust and smoke everywhere, so you can't see them. Yeah, they don't even notice. Yeah, weird. Which I don't know why do, the robots yeah. miss. Yeah, I, I don't have an explanation. Yeah, weird. Scary, though. Super scary. But the most unrealistic thing in this movie, by far, is this is L.A. Where's the traffic? No traffic. This I see red lights, but no one waiting. Yeah, I see no one waiting. Like, this guy's like, I got plenty of space. Let me just mosey on out here. And then this guy's parking job. What is like, this? Like, how much space do you need, bro? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He likes uh, a nice, like a morning hike to the sidewalk. That's right. I Gosh, mean, he's like parked way out there. He's way out there. He, this lane is no go anymore. Oh, gosh, I can't unsee it. He's like, there's no traffic here. It's no big deal. It's only downtown LA. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Even at nighttime, this place should be packed. Yeah. Oh, I can't unsee it. <laughs> this boss, I do not. I oh, Gosh, I, I, I cannot imagine working for this guy it'd be so frustrating Ed, what do you got dead girl i can see that sarah ann connor shot six times at less than 10 feet you know these work they do what's this okay 
dead girl, too. I'm sure there's a point to all of this. Look at the name, man. Sarah Louise Connor. Is this right? You're kidding me. So he, like, he, twice, twice he's like, I got eyes. I can see you. You don't got to tell me. And then he immediately, immediately is like, oh, yeah, tell me about this. Like, <laughs> there's a mixed message. Like, do you want me to tell you yes. stuff or not tell you stuff? He, uh, this guy is trying to help the lieutenant mm-hmm. understand the situation, and he's giving them information. Maybe is on the paper, readily available, but they're having a conversation. Why is the lieutenant kind of bullying this guy? Like, I, I would just, I would just always leave documents on his desk, and I would never talk to him. Never like, talk to him. Like, I got eyes, and like, I got eyes. Tell me about this. Like, <laughs> told, <laughs> he told said, me twice not to tell you. Why didn't you tell me about the document? It's on your table. Can you not see? Do your glasses yeah, so you not got work? Glasses. Boom. Now I'm fired. Great. Great. But why why would this guy help? Why would he help him? Wait, can we What do you got? So can yeah. we play, can we play it can we play it twice? And like and like listen and pause it when he chastises. Dead girl. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah Ann Connor shot six times at less than 10 feet. You know, these work. These work. He chastises me twice. And then immediately, immediately. What's this? He asked Dead me what it is. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, do you want me to explain it and help you out? Or do you not want me to? That's right. <laughs> what? This guy. This guy. I would hate this guy. working for him. It would be really difficult to work for him because you wouldn't know oh, gosh. what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to help out. You're supposed to not help out. Is that condescending? Is that, like, what's the deal here? But maybe, oh gosh, but maybe it makes sense for their work culture because people that are showing him like obvious things too often. And then when he needs synopsis for complicated stuff, like you need it. Like I'm still, I'm still a lieutenant. Like, mm-hmm. mm. Maybe it's this charisma around the office where that's just how he works and people love it. And it's okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. And, and it's like, it's tough rules, but it's fair rules and everyone gets it. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. And he's the leader. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. Fine. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Fine. <laughs> okay. Work for him. Sarah Connor is running away from Kyle Reeves. He's feeling heebie, jeebie, creepy, creepy to her. So she dives into this bar, this dance bar, and then she makes a phone call. Creepy. Hey, you got a phone? Put it in the back. It's not the back. It is clearly not in the back. It's somewhere there. <laughs> Finds the payphone. All right. You have reached the Los Angeles Police Department. So right loud. All so our loud. lines are busy. Can you imagine, like, trying to make a phone call in, like, in the middle of a dance bar? I, I mean, it'd be impossible. You couldn't be. You wouldn't be able to hear. A damn thing like i can't it just it would just be me shouting just me shouting into the phone right. like i hope i hope you hear me i hope yeah. i hope you hear me yeah and you and those those old payphones the the microphone in the the earpiece mm-hmm. not always the best sound quality so you're fighting the surrounding noise plus the the terrible so- sound quality of the phone mm-hmm. why is it in the middle of the dance what? floor yeah why is it there at all shouldn't it be like somewhere in the back by the bathrooms or something I mean, yeah. So when when the the woman who was taking the the cover charges was like, it's in the back, picturing like back by the bathrooms. Yeah, somewhere not, back somewhere where it's quiet. Right, not in the middle of the of the bar. It's like it's like in the middle, like on a pillar that's like supporting the entire building. It's just hanging out in the middle. So like everyone has to like talk around her. Like she has to listen to just everyone. Like it's terrible. Mm-hmm. This feels like one of those like legal requirements that sometimes places have to go th- have to do. It's like you need. To have a phone in the middle because that means that you won't be a noisy place. So they put the phone, but it's not not really supposed to be used. It's just a legal uh, requirement. Something like so that. So it's like it's like the easiest place to drop the like the phone wire and so like here it's in the middle, like right. it's fine, whatever. We're like mi- dialing this in as, <laughs> as little as possible and simple as possible. And then it's like no one's ever gonna really use this and now, right. now they have this thing. Now they have this thing. And it has to work, otherwise it won't pass inspection, something like that. Hmm. Wonder if LA I mean, had anything like that back in the eighties. Probably, <laughs> all, probably all these yeah. like clubs Absolutely. and phones. <laughs> Absolutely stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Terrible. 
Yeah. I just don't think he'd be able to hear anything. Nope. Too loud. Nope. Too loud. Can you imagine? So, so back in the day, back, back in the day, we had like answering machines. So like machines that you would like, mm-hmm. it was literally like a tape that you would record your message on and click it later. Okay. Sarah makes a call to her roommate and uh, let's listen to her call. Hi there. I, I, I fooled you. You're talking to a machine, but don't be shy. It's okay. Machines need love too. Think of this hmm? Sarah. Pick up if you dare. I'm at this place on Chico Boulevard. I'm really scared. I think that there's somebody after me. I hope that you play this back soon. I need you not to come and pick me up as soon as possible. Call me, kiddo. I need your help. Did you hear when she said, I hope that you play this back soon? Like, yeah. Can you imagine, like, in any sense of urgency, even even not urgent, but just being like, like leaving a phone call, leaving a message, and be like, "I hope you hear this. Like, come, <laughs> come pick me up sometime I mean, in the future." Like, it's so stressful to me now. Yeah, I mean, I don't have to imagine because I mean, when I was a kid and teenager, I did not have a cell phone, and so I had to do this. Yeah. But it's such a distant memory at this point. I'm like, how? How I just leave function? leave a message with somebody and I just hope they hear it and I'm just sitting there. I hope you're the kind of person that like listens to their messages every day because if not, then I could be waiting overnight. Right, and then so I'm thinking about I got to make an additional phone call. I can't text you. I can't. I don't know where you are. Nope. So I have to wait until you That's right. listen That's right. to the message. If you if and, if I'm hungry and I see a pizza place across the street, like I can't go there because then I might miss you when your car shows up. And I can't text you. Be like, I'll just be at the pizza place waiting. Because how would you know Text that I went exist. to the pizza place? Texts yeah. don't exist yet. It doesn't exist yet. Actually, it may have existed, but only for like specialized things, not like widespread. Nobody had cell phones. Yeah, yeah. You people people didn't have cell phones. This would be just this, this triggers my anxiety now. <laughs> like right. thinking about thinking about I just gotta sit here and wait mm-hmm. until they show up. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, you didn't even get confirmation that they got your message. Because they can't call you back. I guess you could leave back. the number of the payphone, but that was really that uncommon. Thing? I didn't like even you know can, that was an option. Yeah. I think it was on, written on the payphone. They actually had the payphone number, and you can tell them the number to call back on. And that's even worse because now I can't even sit other places in the bar. I need to right. sit like there at that phone. That's right. Because if it rings, I have to pick it up. How did we used to like do society? <laughs> that's right. So, so back when I was in middle school or high school, one of those, I would like call my dad on the payphone and then leave a message. And I'd be like, I guess he's going to pick me up sometime between 10 minutes from now or several hours. I guess I just sit down outside and like wait. Yeah. But I guess, I guess the good thing is that like, is that when during that waiting time, you're truly disconnected. Like nobody's going to contact you. You could just sit and listen to the breeze or whatever, or I don't know, do some, do something, whatever kids do. It, 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 it is an interesting feeling that today we're, you know, so even if you can't get in contact with somebody, you have your phone, you can get instant news, you can text people, you social media, you can, you're always connected to like the world. But here, as soon as that phone is hung up, you're this isolated human experiencing you're free. the world. You're free. You go to the dance floor, you can make out with someone, do some drugs. You're free. It's yeah. You're totally disconnected and free. Wow. But now, like, who does that? People, people, like, they sit down outside with their phone. With their phone. So if I, if this happened to me as well, where I call my parents and just wait for some un- unknown amount of time, hours, they'll perhaps, show up. They'll show up whenever. Just I whenever better have they a, show up. I better have a book with me or some homework to do or something because mm. I have no phone to waste time on. I have to like meditate. Who wants to do that? Nobody wants to do that. I want to look at stuff on Reddit. I might even solve my mental issues if I do that. Reddit is much easier. Oh, no, thank you. No, no, that. no, 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 no. <laughs> that growth. Right. <laughs> Personal growth, spiritual growth. No, thank you. No, 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 no thank, thank you. you. Listen stressful. to the birds. I don't even know what those are anymore. Do birds still I, exist? I, oh, I did see I, some pictures on Instagram once of birds. Yep. Anxiety. Just, just hope. Just hope that they show up. So okay. here in the bar, Anu shows up and he's hunting Sarah Gondor. Yeah. Something Sarah Connor. Uh, Kyle Reese is in full creep mode. Full creep, maximum creep. There's so right. many people in this bar, and he is locked in. He's he's right. his eyes. He's staring daggers. 
And he doesn't just sit next to her or sit nearby and maybe talk to somebody, maybe maybe get drop her a one-liner or something. No, no, no. He's going to sit far away across the bar, staring between glasses with like the, <laughs> the creeper stare, like Clockwork Orange style at her. He- Oh, gosh, he's not even like going full. F- yeah, he's not going for direct stare, like charming smile. He's like between the bottles, sneaky kid. Like he right. knows that he shouldn't be looking. <laughs> right. And then she's just got this like wide eyed, scared look on her face. I mean, I guess it's looking at making eye contact. I mean, she should be scared of this guy, but instead she's scared of this guy. Yeah, but mm-hmm. let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Who did she go home with? I mean, eh? with that eh? is, <laughs> eh? <laughs> I mean, only because this guy opened fired and she and he was the only option to run away with. <laughs> and not only he had the shot, the Terminator had the shot in the moment. What happened? It's right there. He's got the shot. What's right the problem? There. He's got the shot with the perfect weapon. That's right. Perfect weapon. He knows exactly where it's going to hit right there. Yup. He's lined it up. Lined He's it already up. done the, the clicky clocky thing. Yeah. He, yeah, he <laughs> jumped <it> around. Yeah. <laughs> what's the holdup? Yeah. What's the problem? I also I mean, saw this and I was like, why is, is time slowing down? Is he have some time slow down field? And I'm like, no, everyone else is dancing like normally. So the Terminator just, he just froze. He just locked in. So, You know, like robots and electronics we have today have like sub millisecond easily reaction time. So as soon as the laser crosses the fatal zone, I mean, it's almost an instant trigger pull, I would think. Pop, pop, right? But maybe, maybe you're in a low light environment. He needs like all this confirmation. There's a lot of noise. He needs confirmation that he's actually killing Sarah Connor. If he blows her face off right now, uh, he won't be able to get the confirmation. So he slows down, like a human would, it's everything slows down his reaction time because he doesn't, he has to take time to process. You know, I like that. I like that because there are several people that the Terminator kills like willy nilly, like, mm-hmm. like without a thought. But then when he was in Sarah Connor's apartment and he was mm-hmm. shooting, he was killing her roommate, I forgot her name, but, but he also slowed down yet. for her. So I think I think that I think that makes sense that that when it's like the actual target, mm-hmm. he needs to like process, map her facial characteristics, I don't mm-hmm. know features, whatever. Try to like really figure out is this the correct target so I can confirm mm-hmm. the kill. I guess that yeah, that makes sense for why for both the roommate because he thought it was Sarah, and then also for actually Sarah, like he slows down. So right, and computation cycles. And this is a heavy noise environment with weird lighting, so that's mm-hmm. going to slow him mm-hmm. down even further. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So just like a human, his processing slows down in a unknown, weird environment. I mean, he needs, and it slows down when he like needs to really be sure. That's right. Like, so how many times have I done physi- like, multiplication that was like a struggle bus because I like I need this multiplication to be right, but any other time, no problem. Then if you try to do multiplication in the middle of the club, no chance. No chance. <laughs> I'm always trying to multiply in the club. <laughs> That's right. So he has the shot. Physically, he has the capability to take it. It's the processing that's holding him back, which gives Kyle Reese the, the time to knock it out of his hand. Yep. Just enough time. Cars were unsafe in the 80s. Let's take a look. Like, I don't want to get into an accident with that car. What is it exploding so big for? <laughs> that's right imagine if it, it wasn't a bullet it wasn't like a pellet from the shotgun it was like it was like a, gr- a little piece of rock came off the bottom from the freeway Pop, right. just, like, just kaboom just yeah i mean look at the explosion on this thing and the explosion is not even confined to outside of the car it's like it's in the cabin look at like a passenger right. oh, yeah. there. they're they're totally toast mm. so i think this needs to be re-engineered what in the world is going on with cars in the 80s I mean, Kyle Reese also got some good intel on cars in the 80s. He's like, yeah, our cars today are armored up. You can't, you can't shoot them. It's not a bomb. But in the when you go back in time to the 80s, you can shoot cars. No, no, no right. problem. They'll blow gotta, up on you. You got to squat down, get low, <laughs> aim for the tank, <laughs> and then shoot like underneath the car. You'll hit it. That's right. Also, is this door going to save him? 
Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Wait, 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 wait. So there's a Terminator <laughs> coming after him with the the Colt 45 long slide with the like the scope and yeah. the perfect, just the perfect weapon. And then like that that door is thin. Like <laughs> you can get wall banged with that. Wall bang? What is wall bang? Oh, sorry. Wall bang is like from I don't know this from video games. I don't know if it's a real thing. It's like you just shoot at the wall. Oh, oh, that's what that's called. Yeah. So you're, he's not. So Terminator would not have to wait for Kyle Reese to like stand up. Just mm-hmm. you know, he's behind the door. Just shoot through the door. Just shoot the door. In fact, just unload on the door to hit something. Unload on the door. Mm-hmm. Although maybe he knows that Sarah Khan is here and he needs that confirm. So he doesn't want to. But he could use the processing from last time. To know that that's her. I like, yeah, it's still the same person. I kept line of sight the whole time. I know that's her running. Right. That's right. Hmm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But excellent tactician. Mm-hmm. Pop a nearby car. Yeah. So this is some uh, Terminator lore. Let's listen to Kyle Reese go on and on about the his- future history of the robots. Why does it want me? It was a nuclear war. A few years from now, all this, this whole place, everything, it's gone. Just gone. There were survivors. Here, there. Nobody even knew who started it. It was the machines, Sarah. Defense network computers. New, powerful, hooked into everything. So one thing that I thought of watching this, this movie's from 1984. They were worried about AI and machine learning and tech back and then. networking. Yep. And I don't even think it was new then, the ideas. It's more like from the 40s and 50s, science fiction authors. So all these concerns we have about AI today, machine learning, it's been around. It's been around, but really kind of boiling in the background. I think now it's mm-hmm. a hot fire flame getting real close to potential problems. Or, or we're pretty or, far away. I've, I've actually, I thought, I thought self-driving cars would have been here by now. So I wonder in yeah. the 80s, would they be surprised if they came to 2024 now? And we're like, all you have is a glorified search engine. That's it. That's right. I think you've you've hit the nail on the head. They feel like they are expecting all like future cars and hoverboards. And instead we got TikTok, which is, which is fun. But oh, it's fun. Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. it recommends the video you want next really, really well. They'd be like, what? That's it? That's pretty clever. I was pred- <laughs> I was predicting machines taking over the world. And Skynet, and you get you gave right. me TikTok. <laughs> you gave me TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And hoverboards that don't really hover. That's right. Just marketing to run it all. They say it got smart, a new order of intelligence. Then it saw all people as a threat, not just the ones on the other side. It decided our fate in a microsecond. Extermination. Did you see this war? No. I grew up after in the ruins, starving, hiding from HKs. HKs? Hunter killers. Patrol machines built in automated factories. Most of us were rounded up, put in camps for orderly disposal. So interesting. The the machines needed the humans for something. You rounded them up, put them in camps. I mean, to me, it's like if they if the robots need work done, they would just use the robots to do it. That's right. But they rounded and up the people. Why? That's right. And if if it if I'm doing like a species annihilation, I'm just cleaning people out. Like I'm not stopping to be like, oh, I should save a few so I can do labor. Right, right. I would only do that if I re- like I have to. Like, like this cannot be done by a robot. I need a human to do this. Mm-hmm. Which means maybe that the robots have a, a drawback or a disadvantage that humans have as an advantage, and we're just not seeing it. Because otherwise, they would just kill everybody they came across. Yeah, easy peasy, problem done. What could that be? Maybe our mm. process, like maybe our improvisation processing is better, but then they're just doing body disposal. Oh, is that what they're doing? They're just uh, using, what I was listening. using the humans for body disposal? Put in camps for orderly disposal. Spurned it by laser scanner. Some of us were kept alive to work, loading bodies. The disposal units ran night and day. So they're disposing bodies? That maybe makes that's some- no sense to me. Maybe that's what the, the robots were telling the humans that they were doing, but actually they were using the humans in some other way that humans were unaware of. They're like, oh, this is terrible. I'm unloading bodies into a processor. But actually, I wonder, they... I wonder 
if you keep some you keep the humans around in a concentration camp in a work camp to do labor and mm -hmm. the labor you give them is moving bodies however mm -hmm. you grab a couple of them a few of them and you get them to do the real work whatever real work uh -huh. that you like really need them to be humans for and then you keep everyone else thinking that you're there for disposing of bodies and as far as they mm -hmm. can tell yeah that is right but you just nab one or two at a time and then get them to do the thing you need uh, so that was just fake work really right to keep them occupied um, you keep like a stock of you keep a supply of humans around <clears throat> giving them a job that they mm -hmm. can do and then mm -hmm. they think that that's what they're there for I'm like no 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 you, there's a real thing going on somewhere else oh i wonder what that thing is because my hunch is building the factories that make more robots because like be. robots can be produced from a factory, but then if you ask a robot like, "Hey, build a build, build a new factory for your your 2.0 model," they'd be like, "What the fuck? Like, what do you want?" But you could threaten a human into mm -hmm. taking their life away, and then they'll solve it for you. That's right. And humans have this imagination to be able to build things without it existing, and maybe the robots right. can't do that kind of imaginative thinking. So they mm. keep them around to build and run and maintain factories for the things that the robots can't easily do. I like it. Mm -hmm. So mm. I'm, I'm guessing that the humans built the factories for the hunter killers. Well, they certainly built the first factories that built the robots. The question mm -hmm. is, you're saying the robots cannot build additional factories to build the hunter killers and additional things. I can yeah, see it. Saying. I can see it. Interesting. Oh gosh, what if, what if humans were actually the ones that came up with the idea of the T101? Like before, it was just hunter killers, and they would roam around. And then the humans were the ones that came up with the idea of like infiltration units. Let's make robots look like humans. And like you can't get a robot to make that, but like you can get a human to make that. Oh, and the robots take care of the traitorous humans really well. Oh, shit. there's traitors. I, I mean, there often are in war. Like I mean, some people defect. Often. I mean, let's say you're up against super robots and they offer you paradise. And you're like, no, I'm a human. No, no, okay, it's okay, my bam, species. You're dead. Right. I mean, That'd I bet be somebody in the room would be like, I think we could solve this through peace. Like, I'm going to work with them and change the robots' minds. Like, I bet somebody, some percentage of people are going to do that. That's right. I mean, they are traitors, but some, people, maybe, some percentage are going to do that. Maybe the robots are defending a human paradise that the terrorist humans are trying to destroy. And we're actually on the wrong side of history. I think we just broke the story for T5. <laughs> <laughs> the new sequel is that wait, the whole thing wait. was actually. The whole thing was actually human run, a human run paradise taking on terrorists. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, there's, that, there's actually Terminator 1, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, Terminator 3, Terminator 4, Salvation. Then I think there's a Terminator 5 that was a reboot. Mm -hmm. So I think it would then be Terminator Six. Terminator Six. Terminator Six is where we break the story that it's actually the the it's like the poor people versus the rich people. God damn it! God damn. <laughs> and the rich people have a paradise, and they're using the robots to to kill all the poor people. You travel like like you travel like a thousand miles east, and it's like super nice. <laughs> it's just a West Coast war. Mm -hmm. And so that's why that's also one of the reasons why they round up the people because they're trying to convert them to the paradise side, and some of them refuse. The ones that refuse, you put them in a labor camp. Put them in a labor camp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That close to going out forever. But there was one man who taught us to fight, to storm the wire of the camps, to smash those metal mother into junk. He turned it around. He brought us back from the brink. His name is Connor. John Connor. So he's the terrorist leader. That's he's, right. Uh, okay. I mean, okay. Well, <laughs> flipping the story on its head here, but like, possible. Why, well, yeah. Why else would they round up the humans? Yeah, right. Just kill them. Just kill them. Just get yep. get it over with. Weird, weird, weird. This was interesting. So later Kyle, on, yeah, Kyle okay. Reese gets so, captured by the cops, and he's explaining to the cops the situation. Even that's gonna sound crazy. Why does he go like physically in the room crazy? Let's watch. Well, let's go back to one other Look, thing. Look, you have heard enough. I have answered your question. Now I have to see Sarah Connor. Why am I 
talking to you. Because I Who is an authority here? Please, please. Shut up! Still don't get it, do you? He'll find her. That's what he does. That's all he does. You can't stop him. He'll wait for you, reach down her throat, and pull her fucking heart out. Go with me! I mean, he just goes wild in the room. You're saying, like, why doesn't he just calmly present his story? Like, Yeah, why not Why not calmly present your story? I mean, you yeah, know it's going to come across as nuts. <laughs> yeah, I guess you just, got a point. Yeah, because, like, cause like I, I'm a time traveler. And at this point in time, there are no other time travelers. So it's going to be crazy. Like, the more animated, the more crazy I look, the mm-hmm. less people are going to believe me. And, like, I'm, I'm already asking them a lot. Like, right. you got to be cool about but, it. But is that true? Should the crazy, if it's true, be backed up with the appropriate emotional response? Because the stakes are not just high. They're like the highest they could be. This is ex- ex- extinction. This is as high as it can be. High as it can be. Gosh, I'm gosh, I'm feeling the backstory, but I imagine that the first pass, he's like, mm-hmm. the police. Yes, okay, I can tell the authorities mm-hmm. we got this under control now. Like, they'll understand. They like, they're like, we're, we're humans. We're on mm-hmm. the same side. And But then, but then like, as he goes through one iteration, answers questions, second iteration, answers questions, third iteration, mm-hmm. like it's frustrating. Like, start, please start listening to me. I imagine mm-hmm. like that is when he's like going off the handle. Mm-hmm. So you think it's just at this point, it's like, whatever. I, I mean, I'm, I've tried to reason with him. I try to be calm. I try to be rational. I am f- frustrated. Let's f- this. Time to try the crazy. Yeah. Do you think but, the the before they went into the time machine, they thought about being captured in the 1980s, or or it's like here, this is the story you tell them. That's a good point. So, did they think about this? I, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, maybe and, not. and like, let's let's think about it like this. Like like, is there a as a time traveler, how do you prove to someone in the past that you are indeed a time traveler and that they should listen to you? And that you're not crazy. Like, what, what to, information do you yeah. need to tell them to convince them? Sports betting. You make people bet on sports, and make them a that's ton right. of money, and you're never wrong. But that takes that's time. Right. That's you got to wait. Was like, okay, the World Series is in three months because I don't remember the regular season games outcomes. I remember the big which, games outcomes. Which is also okay, right? So it's like I have something that needs to go down in 2030. I'm going to arrive in 2024 and like, hey, in person, I'm going to give you six years worth of consistency uh-huh. so that when that 2030, what in years? When the six years issue yeah. comes up, you're going to believe me. That's right. And the Terminator went through the time machine first. Yeah. And then Kyle Reese followed up at the same time. Maybe you should have given I it. Guess. Maybe they didn't, weren't able to do that. Maybe it was locked in. I don't know. But yeah. if it wasn't locked in, you'd go back like five years, say, build up. Oh the no! Force. Oh no! No, I'd go back to the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I'd get it written into the <laughs> document and watch out for this date in twenty twenty whatever. Like when this is this has been passed down for generations of all humankind of American ancestry. <laughs> That's how far back I'd go. Well, I mean, okay, at that point, let's go, you know, to Jesus Christ and put it in like the Bible. On this date, yep. he's coming. Heck, go back to the Old Testament. That's right. Heck, heck go they're back to the formation of the earth and build like, in human cognition. No, that's too much. I can't. I don't know. That's, what, do that's that. what Stonehenge is. <laughs> Stonehenge is actually a message for us to watch out for te- as Terminators. Right. But the message was lost through erosion, and now we don't know what to do. too far. Okay, so sports betting. Sports betting, <laughs> sports betting. for like a six-year window or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you, you can't go too far back because then he's going to age too much, age out. Right. You don't want to go too close because you don't give enough time to, enough time to prep and convince people. So maybe five years is about right. If he's like 25, 30. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I got an idea. You go back, you go back like 70 years. 70 mm-hmm. years, yeah, you're going to age out, but your kids and their kids might be in prime time, prime time ready to fight. And not only that, but you start a cult. So then you get like a whole army ready to chase after the T-101, chase after Arnold, ready to fight. Ready to defend Sarah Connor. You just need to be a cult leader. Wait, how does making a cult? I think is how difficult, right? I don't. I don't know. I've never tried, but I believe in you. I think you could do it if you wanted to. I just don't. I think. I don't think that's an easy thing to do, unless he's got training on how to make a cult. 
So all time travelers should be trained in sports betting and cult leadership. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So in summary, in this in this when he's in the police station, he goes crazy. He's probably been saying he's got no other choice. Better just go with it. Maybe got He's Maybe he's got, got a it. huge time crunch here. He hasn't he he knows the terminator is en route and there's nothing he can do. Mm-hmm. So hmm. Yeah, so that's, I got to get emphatic, got to get yeah. convincing. And the Terminator does show up. Mm-hmm. I'm a friend of Sierra Kana. I was told that she's here. Could I see her, please? No. Where is she? Look, it may take a while. I want to wait. There's a bench over there. I'll be back. Also, this guy is the front desk guy. He doesn't think like, hey, there's a suspicious guy here asking for Sarah Connor. Yeah. What well, can? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like 10 p.m. Like, at night. He's wearing sunglasses at night. He's like, there's jacket. one person we're supposed to protect in the entire city. And he's like, With I want to see this person. You're like, mm, don't feel good. Right? Okay, but look at the yeah. stripes. This guy yeah. is three stripes. That means he's pretty high ranking. But also okay. he's working the desk job. It means he did something bad and got with the, he got, got the done with the job. So like, okay. this guy does not care. This guy, this guy is like, I'm here for two more hours. I, I don't care. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like. I don't care. Weird accent, sunglasses, asking about the weird thing that just happened. I don't mm-hmm. care. I got There's I got one. my paperwork to get to get home to. That's right. Because he's just working this paperwork right here. You know, but maybe maybe he hears the accent. He sees us on sunglasses, and he's like, "It's a cultural difference. Like, whatever. Like, that's fine." But just just go sit down. <laughs> but then he doesn't go sit down. He he's leaves. like, "Well, yeah." The guy leaves. He's like, "Ah, even better." You met this dude left. He said he'll come back, but like fine, I'll deal with it. He's like out of my hair. Yeah. Uh, Where is she? Look, it may take a while. I want to wait. There's a bench over there. I'll be back. (laughs) Classic moment. Crunch. Crunch. Then Arnold gets out. The model 101 gets out of the the car and starts to shoot out. So, so I can imagine the cops, even though this is a terrible situation, they get sh- there's a shootout in the police precinct. They'd be fairly confident they can defend themselves. And there must be a yeah. moment where, like, the police are shooting for each person. They're shooting the person, thinking, "I got this." They get a couple shots off, and the person doesn't budge. And they're like, "What?" And then they die, like this guy, <laughs> like this guy. <laughs> like he gets he gets a couple shots off. He must be thinking, I got him. There's an intruder in the police station. Guns are going off. Like, okay, but this is the police station. This is our house. This is this is like this is the safest place in the city. This is where the police officers like mm-hmm. hang out or work, right? And they got all yeah. the armory, they got all the guns they need. And like now is my chance. I'm gonna be the hero. I'm gonna be the He's hero. He's gonna be hero. Shot. And then yeah. Got him. Got him. Square it up. Feet level. Oh. Oh. Hey, go back, go back, go back, go back. You saw, you can see him take two shots, and then be mm-hmm. like, "I shot this guy. I, sh- I shot this intruder. Mm-hmm. This this big dude with the accent and sunglasses. Yeah. I shot him. Like, why isn't he going down?" And so, like, you right. can see, like, there's a moment. There's a moment where it's like, mm-hmm. "This isn't working. Like, I gotta yeah. run. Gotta run." And then he gets wall shot. He gets, he gets wall banged. Yeah. Oh god. It just must be. It, might, it would be terrifying. Right. To be like, there's a human in here. We'll deal with him how humans work. I mean, why would you? Why wouldn't you think it would be anything besides human? Like, shoot right. him. Person's going down. Bad guy's going down. Good guy wins. Right. And then for it to not work, it's like, like <sighs> what? What am what? I dealing with? Right. And then you die. And then you die. <laughs> then just, just because he just takes out the power. <laughs> and then this motherfucker goes off the power. Like, what is your mission? You're missing the kill cops. You're going off the power. I mean, the Terminator knows that the people need visible light to see. The Terminator has all the night vision, so he degrades his vision, but it's a huge advantage for him. Right. He hits him. Hits him. Doesn't respond. Dead. Oh, one little. Got wrist strength. What was that? 
He, got, he one hands the heavy spat the spaz shotgun, notoriously yeah. heavy shotgun, and he one hands it. He one hands it with just just no support. No support. Oh, I mean, doesn't he? He's got he's a full robot. Like he's he's got two huge weapons in either arm, full one hundred percent accuracy. Just, just <laughs> the wrist strength, the wrist strength to support those things. I don't want to fight this guy. Nope. Oof. Shot, shot, shot. Got him in the back. He's dead. He's dead. This, this boss, he's not so nice to work for, but I still want him to live. What was that? This boss, he's not so nice to work for, but I still want him to live. Yeah. I mean, just because he has some bully tactics doesn't mean he has, needs to be shot. Exactly. Let me get out of there. Like, whew. So that is weird to me that the Terminator misses this shot. He he actually has time to line it up. Two hands. Yep. Two hands. So this is like definitely going to make the shot. And he misses. That's multiple shots of miss. Gosh, now that makes me think that it's built into the programming to have some miss percentage. Right. Because this is actually fairly close. He knows exactly where the gun is pointing. There's he knows the arc of the bullet for gravity, which is extremely small. I mean, it's distances. essentially none because it's so close. Right. Yeah, and he knows the car is moving, and he can calculate it very constant velocity, measure it pretty close. I mean, it may be accelerating or something. Even if it's accelerating, it's not so accelerating so fast that his processor cannot keep up. That's right, and and during bullet travel time, it's probably essentially mm -hmm. very constant velocity. So he can station. he can do a one of these really yep. fairly quickly. Yep. And he has multi time to get multiple shots off. It's an automatic he, weapon. Yeah, shoot, just spray. And he knows the recoil characteristics of the weapon. So he can mm -hmm. shoot one mm -hmm. and the recoil will take him somewhere else. Shoot the next one, recoil will take him somewhere else. He can anticipate that at a level a human can't. I don't understand why he still, misses. Still misses. I don't get it. Yeah. So it must be a pre-programmed miss percentage. Maybe it's sabotaged by the people. That's such a subtle sabotage. That's such we'll a make, subtle we'll, sabotage. We'll make the full robot, but we'll give him a, a spread. <laughs> a little more spread. That's right. <laughs> give humans a chance. Yep. Crazy. So the premise in this film is is time traveling. However, time traveling is very tricky because it can very quickly become like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Sarah Connor taught her son to fight, organize, prepare from when he was a kid. When you were in hiding before the war. Yeah, so John Connor's prepared as the person who saves the world because his mom taught him and his mom taught him because John Connor sent Kyle Reese back in time to pork his mom. So it's like, yeah. where did the information come from for Sarah Connor to know that the robots are gonna rise up? And each step along the way makes sense. Like each mm -hmm. step, like, yeah, that's what you should do. But actually when as a whole, it's like, why did this thing happen at all? Because if it doesn't happen, if, if any one of these pieces doesn't happen, then the whole thing doesn't happen. What like what caused it? What starts it? What's the initiation? All right, there is no initiation. It's like a it's a loop in time that has no cause. Weird. So, so weird, like, weird, it's like weird. a it's a weird right. But okay, I mean, but okay, but weird. Does does that mean that Sarah Connor and John Connor are part of the loop that creates the war? I think it is. So it's it's Sarah Connor. If she doesn't prepare for war, then the war might not happen. So it's like the act mm -hmm. of knowing that a war happened causes the war to happen. Right. In some butterfly effect sort of way, maybe. Because mm -hmm. she's, she's not Miles Dyson. But she's somehow part of this loop. Do you remember Miles Dyson from T2? He's the scientist who creates... Terminators. Okay, we'll we'll get that next. Time. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm watching that. <laughs> so okay. IR infrared. So do the machines use infrared? You still have to be careful because the HKs use infrared. So it seems like they do. So they yeah, they use infrared. But isn't this a devastating capability? I mean, imagine if you were a soldier today and not needing to use night vision, you just got it. Like right. everything you process is in say you got multiple wavelengths of ir that you can see 
you would have such a huge advantage. You have night vision. You can walk around. You can see people. Like over in that mountain, there's a guy. And there's a deer over there. And there's a rabbit over there. There's a bird in the sky. Like you can see at night everything that's warm-blooded. It's just an enormous advantage. Like 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 right now, as, as humans, we wear camouflage. We wear camouflage so that it breaks up your outline of what looks like a human. But what would that be for something that's warm, something that's hot? Like you'd have to have clothing that perfectly dials you into the room temperature of everything else around you. That's right. And if you don't, then someone with night, with infrared just like, but there boop, it is. Boop. There's no no point in hiding. Yeah. I can see you. Yeah. It's like in fact, you're trans- making you're making stuff around you warm. Like yeah. I can see that too. Yeah, yeah. It's like putting transparent camo on a glow stick. It's like nothing. It's nothing. Right, okay, camo okay. does nothing. It's nothing. So he, I feel like Kyle Reese does, it feels like it's such an advantage that the, the, the robots would just destroy. Yeah. It, the hunter it would killers. have such an advantage that humans would just, how, how could you hide? Like, even if you had this underground bunker where all the people live, like mm-hmm. it's generating enough heat. Like, like right. the floor doesn't, looking, living in the ground doesn't guarantee that you're thermally invisible. Like right. you're still generating heat. You're still going to get an area that's generally warm compared to the other stuff. Right. And then those, those hovercraft need to be like, yeah, there, it's just, just there, the glowing thing, the hot thing. Yeah. Yeah, and you need to be hyper disciplined about IR leakage from your base, and you can't you can't look at it or see it yourself. So you have you you don't know Ooh. if you're leaking. It would just, I just, ugh, it was Humans so would difficult. Make mistakes all the time. You'd have to have like perfectly like dialed in procedures and how to get in and out of your base. Because right. if you mess it up one time, a Terminator walks in and kills everyone. Right, and if you so invisible light, if somebody closes a door. You say, we're closing the door because we want to stop the visible light to get out so that people can't see us. But if it's completely dark and you're like, hey, close the door. And some dude's like, I don't need to close the door. It's dark. You're done. It's dark. Yeah, you're, right. done. Because you're done because you're you're still irradiating out infrared heat. So people, right. so the, the sky bots can see your hot spot, even though it's dark, even though right. it's like new moon, super dark, mm-hmm. even, even covered, even covered yeah. with, with like fabric, super dark, but yeah. nope, still transparent to infrared. So there would be a lot of people who there'd be a lot of procedures that would be in place that people wouldn't understand that they'd have to do with full discipline all the time, no mistakes, no way, no way. I mean, I'm not even sure that they have good discipline for their base as it is. Right. Let's take a look. So this loud knocking. Knock, knock, knock. I'm. I've got flying guys, with all the censored up to the gills as robots, and that means microphones. And I hear dunk, dunk, dunk. Maybe it's there. something. <laughs> it's right there. It's right there. And I was also mad that the dogs were determining if the people were robots inside the base things happen outside the base i see, I see. so I see. yeah I, I like that the dogs smell the human because if it smells mm-hmm. like a human it smells like a human if it smells like a or like a machine that is not a human mm-hmm. but the the intruder the potential intruder that they're already inside so you're, you're saying it needs to happen outside that door right so it would be nice if there was maybe a man trap situation, but if there's if it's impossible to create a man trap, then it just has to happen outside. And what's a man trap? Man trap is like an airlock where you have two doors and person walks into the first one, closes, you do all your checks. If they fail the checks, then they cannot get into the base through the second door. Uh, and if they pass the checks, then you close this, open this, they can go in. I see. So the dogs and the handler should be hanging out inside the man trap. They sniff them in there and the dog's like, bark, bark, bark. Then everyone inside the base is still safe and they'd be like, "Mm, you don't come inside. That's right. I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. That's what should happen. Right. So I guess the man trap also helps with infrared. Just just another stopgap. That's right. Inside the man trap's got to be full. You got to send in cool air at ambient Mm -hmm. into the man trap. So when you open the outside door, it's invisible to IR. And, and when, one, you never have two doors open at the same time. It's always just one door closes mm-hmm. and then the next door can open. That's right. Mm. Yeah, man, there would need to be some cycling time too because as soon as people walk in there, stuff happens, the air might heat up, you may glow. So now you got to cool it back down. Oh, what a pain. But, I mean, what else are you going to do? I just got to do. It can't be seen with machines. Right. 
Got a good sign-in sheet. Can't lie on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he signs it with like a stubby little bit of piece of pencil or maybe a cigarette. I can't tell any, like flicks it away. Like that's yeah. uh, that's not a secure system. Right. It's good to have the system of some type, but I mean, if somebody is a spy, they're just going to, if they already got this far. <laughs> also, I don't know if you can see it here, but like that door is not gas safe. Let's go back like and a, a machine just throws in a gas grenade. Heck, heck even oh. into this part, like, right? And That's then you right, just yeah. tear gas everyone out. That's right. Because this this is the gap right here. Good against uh, keeping people out or maybe robots out because it's a heavy metal door. But mm -hmm. exposed to the atmosphere outside. So you just no throw gas point. grenades down here. I mean, like, lethal stuff. That's right. Yeah, you, and just, the, let, you just smoke them out. Yeah. And let's watch these procedures fail. So Kyle Reese hears the dogs. That means the thing that set the dogs off is in the base. He's in. He's already in. Yeah, he's done. And, and then this guy on the, the, the mounted machine gun, who's supposed to be the one if the dogs get set off. The door. And where is he? Right here. Yeah. He's asleep at the wheel. That's right. He's got his hands on it, but it's too slow. He needs to be pointed at the door and ready to rock. It's right. Complacency. It's, yeah. And if you take out a human in the process, well, that first of all, that decision has to be made beforehand, I think. Mm -hmm. That the if, if the dogs are set off, then you just gun everyone down. You take out some humans. That really f***ing sucks. But you take out the HK. If you hesitate, then this is what happens, and it's way worse. The HK just walks through your base, people right. up. So the it's complete procedure problems. Ah, that's right. And so like procedure problems, people like poo poo whatever. But like actually, this is life saving. Right. Having the so proper man trap, having the proper door seals, having the dogs in the right place, like the that's correct right. sequence of if I hear an alarm, what do I do? Right. right. This guy needs to be trained up. What do I do about sound? What, what do I do looking? about IR? Because like he has to rotate this thing around, which means that he wasn't pointing at the door. But what is that right. covering besides the door? It has to be covering the door. Why would you have such a huge machine gun except to take out HKs at the door? Right. Otherwise, that's outside. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, it's just procedures fail left and right. Even if this isn't one of the advanced HKs that looks exactly like a human. Mm -hmm. which it kind of kind of looks like it does like there was there was going to be problems there was going to be problems and it's not like technological problems it's mm -hmm. not like i mean gosh it's just administrative it's just let's mm -hmm. make some rules for how this door works what everyone needs to do around the door and then we're right. good and you need complete buy-in from all of compliance. the people there if they think it's like busy work or like not important then you're gonna get, you know, they're gonna have problems. Uh, like putting chemicals in the fume hood. If people are like, "Hey, I don't care, it's fine." Like mm, that's how you get chemicals around the lab. And you knock over by accident. Like, just, right. just, just leave it in the right place. Leave it in the right place. So it looked like maybe they had all the, all the parts Oof. of a secure door, Oof. but it just Gosh. wasn't coordinated. It only needs to be insecure, unsecure. It only needs to be insecure once. That's so right. HK will walk through and then wipe out whatever humans are there. Right, because this is once you get inside, this is what you got. And they're good at like fodder and like lower half of the body human shields, but right. if you need an adult to be protected while they're shooting, then mm -hmm. gosh, look at this laser beam. Yep. I wonder if it's actually plasma. The laser is ripping through there through the air, ionizing the gas. Mm -hmm. It would like sizzle, sizzle and crack. Mm -hmm. Just, just terrifying sounds just yeah if it's at high energy enough to like kill people mm -hmm. it might thunderclap might exactly. clap back plus that thunderclap makes ozone a headache no, it doesn't feel good that's right you get that smell of ozone which you then start to associate with death if i don't you associate that with death oof mm. so in summary Get door procedures. procedures down. Door procedures. Entrance procedures. Right. Don't poo poo procedures. But I wonder, must it be like it must be really traumatic stuff because 
Kyle Reeves, he like he just shoves money at at Sarah. Let's watch. Let's watch. Super weird. Is this enough? Yeah, it's enough. I don't want to ask where you got it. Like what happened? Like what happened in the future where Kyle Reeves sees like he gets a stack of paper all about the same size. And then like instead of like ironing them, and then instead of like flattening them out and putting them in little folded pieces of paper stack, he just has like a ball. He's a ball of money. Right. And it's it's even weirder because he's a soldier and soldiers need to be prepared. That's right. So if he needed so if to you, quick quickly spend money in a high in a low time environment, he's like, Oh, hold on a second, let me uncrinkle the the, the money. A ball ball of money. <laughs> I, I gotta figure out what I have in my hand. Yeah. If if I need to put anything else in my pocket. Nope. <laughs> I just got nope. a, I got a wad of cash in my pocket and nothing else. Right. I mean, there's no way this is going to have to be decrinkled and ordered. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be like an extra five minutes to pay for something. Oh my gosh. So I guess I guess maybe in the future, like even now, like we like I don't carry cash on me. I just credit card and that's it. Right. And even other people are like, just just use mm-hmm. Apple Pay or Google Pay or whatever. Right. But in wartime. I suspect credit cards are not functioning <laughs> anymore right. and like their smartphones are down. So actually maybe he should be more used to using paper money than we are now. In which case, yeah. why, why, why bundle it up into a ball? Like this is, this is unusable. It's unusable. It's hard to harder to hide. Mm-hmm. It's more prone to like you pull it out of your pocket and some, it fly, you know, it falls, it falls on the ground. the ground. Oof. Yeah. So you think you'd be more organized with this. Weird. It's super weird. It's even the more I think about it, the weirder it gets that this happened. Yep. There's the military so something component. happened with Kyle's Reeves' life where he's like, I refuse to flatten out bills and fold them into my pocket. Yeah. Well, he doesn't do tech stuff, so he doesn't like paper. Mm. Did he say that? He didn't say he doesn't like oh, that's paper. Right. He, he, he said he's say he not a tech person. Not a tech guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Super, and then they do pay for the hotel, but that means when they walk into the hotel office, which is off to the right here, have, there's like a whole uncrinkling thing they have to do. <laughs> like, they it'll, it'll be seventy dollars. He's like, hold on. And he pulls oh, out a like, ball of cash and he's like laying them out on the counter, like flattening them out. <laughs> They're not quite flattening, and the dude's like, oh my. He's like, God, okay, so let me know when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's there, like embarrassed by him. <laughs> yeah. So Kyle talks about uh, the pipe bombs. And when earlier when they're making pipe bombs, he's like, oh, easy, easy on the pipe bombs. It's volatile. But then he gets emotional and he's no longer easy on the pipe bombs. I love you. I always have. Okay, he's emotional. Oh! Whoa. The first one, maybe. The second one? Oh! Jesus. It could go off at any second. Why so is he shoving pipe bombs into a bag like this? Yeah, it could go off at any oh, second. I'm angry at you. Just shove my hand. Like, whoa, dude. Yeah. Like, whoa. Insert it in there nicely. Slip it in. I mean, just because that's his advice from earlier is to just place, you know, the pipe bomb into the bag gently. nice and gen- gently, right? Because it mm-hmm. could go off at any second. It, boom, right? boom, boom. Look at this. He's angry. Oh, Kyle Reeves. Dude needs to get laid. Mm. And then he does get late, which we will not show. Yeah. It's a family channel. Then the, the <laughs> tactical <laughs> application of pipe bombs was questionable. Let's watch. This is just this is such a difficult technique that he's trying to do here. Mm-hmm. Like so he's trying to the- hit from a moving vehicle to a second moving vehicle. He's lighting fuses and timing the fuse time, which means he needs to know the characteristics of that fuse mm-hmm. wire. Yep. And then he's like trying to get on, on the way, like in the motion. Yep. Oof, this is a, a challenging way to attack someone. Right. And they, they never actually do score a hit because yeah. it's just too challenging. Look at this. You got this. This represents some sort of time exactly. plus whatever, however long it takes to burn in here. Mm hmm. And have they calibrated by doing test bur- test bombs earlier when they're like, okay, right at this, this is 20 feet, this is 30 feet, this is 40 feet. But then you've got variable speeds of the of the vehicles. Oof. So you got to take that yeah. into account. <laughs> so I guess, I, guess, I guess the way to time it would be by seconds. This, like, this is a five second fuse. I mean, from the start to finish, I got five full seconds. And mm-hmm. then from there, he's just guesstimating how long it takes until Anu mm-hmm. catches up. Right. You don't have much time. I mean, from time from, from. 
I mean, it's less than a second. That's right. Which means going. he needs to cook the grenade. He needs to cook right. the pipe bomb. He needs to like hold it in his hand while it's sizzling down. Right. And then throw it last second. And hopefully there's no sudden turns or anything. So it like, you know. And hopefully they're also far enough away so that they don't get hit with the shrapnel. That's right. Because that is going to be pretty random where it, the shrapnel goes. It's just, it's a strange application of a pipe bomb. That's right. A fused pipe bomb. Maybe maybe he meant it for something else. And then he's like, well, this is what I got. Like, I got to fight the Terminator right now. Yeah, it does, it does feel a little improvised. Yeah. But maybe they should have just fired regular guns out the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, hit, hit his tire and then he goes flipping. Right. And I guess the target is the motorcycle because the Terminator is fairly impervious to a lot of Pretty much stuff. Just, that's a good point. Yeah, so you take out a tire, maybe maybe hit the engine or something. something. Just aim here. Kyle Reese is like, I had success with that big walker, the Johnny Five walker type. Like, I threw a grenade underneath the its foot. I'm going to do the same thing for the T-101. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is so scary. So scary. Ooh, this scene. <laughs> so I know <laughs> the computer grab, well, I guess it's stop motion is kind of goofy, but if I actually am in it, I'm thinking like, whoa, about this it. is this is terrifying. Like, this machine's got this like gangster walk. He's like, he's got a limp to him. Like, oh, he's a mm -hmm. thug. F he's gonna f me up. Oh, so scary. And there's nothing that's gonna stop him except this door. You gotta get the door closed. You gotta get the door closed. Ooh. I think I should install one of the install in my house like one of these like metal door these lever guys. Mm -hmm. mm. Dead I mean, ain't worth it. Easy lock. That's right. Also very strong, I think. Also very clear. Like sometimes I have to go back to the door. I'm like, did I lock this thing? I'm going to go check it that's, that's so right, with this yeah. giant lever thing. Yeah, pretty clear. Mm -hmm. And you can't misalign it, right? There's no way. Oh, this huge tolerance is not a problem. Huge tolerance is not a problem. Also, so the Terminator survives this this blaze. I understand fact, yeah, that there it is. Yeah, here it is right here. I'll zoom in right yeah. there. So I understand that his exoskeleton or endoskeleton, whatever, his, his metal skeleton would survive. Inside. Maybe get a little bit more malleable. But all those sensitive electronics and parts in there, would that going to survive? His blaze? Great question. <clears throat> so I guess my question is how much mass does he have? How much like thermal mass does he? Because it could be that he sl heats up slowly enough that he's out of the fire in time. But otherwise, mm. yeah, you're exactly right. Like like the the... T101 is not fully metal. Like there mm -hmm. are some some semiconductors, there are some rubber in there, you know, there's a bunch of other parts, a bunch of inorganic so, stuff. So, and so, so are the those able to survive the heat? Mm -hmm. So the computer parts could be quite protected inside the skeleton, inside of like encased in the skeleton. Inside the and skeleton. And it'll take a long time to heat those interior parts up. But he does have like joints and actuators. <sighs> And different things and like eyes those are sensitive components that that's right have to be exposed they can't be protected that's right good point so anything that's out on the surface is getting heat dumped into it from the fire just right mm -hmm. now gosh yeah good point yeah, yeah yeah so like even in his feet in his arms and his wrists mm -hmm. like these they're not just gears straight up just grinding on gun gears there's like grease in between the gears and so mm -hmm. from this heat like all that's going to either burn away or melt and then run away or become mm -hmm. hot and then like gummy and like he's going to be right. effectively like arthritis robot like just just struggle right. bending any of the joints and his eyes survive so he doesn't lose his vision that's right it's all it, it would take is some heat distortion to some heat distortion and then those eyes don't work right anymore that's right. And uh, yeah, so is this a little so overpowered, so well built to be able That's to survive right. this inferno? Wow. That's right. Gosh, and now that its skin is all burned and mm -hmm. fucked up, then um all those gears are susceptible to like gravel, right? <laughs> right. That's so right. Sarah Connor like throws a fistful of sands at him and then he's like, Oh, oh my arm's stuck. <laughs> That's right. I mean, we think of our skin as really not effective, like easy to penetrate, but mm. it's actually very, very good at keeping our insides extremely, 
I mean, it keeps it sterile. <laughs> we don't get infections through our skin. So all That's the right. dust and particles and spores just they're outside of our skin all the time. Mm -hmm. He loses it. So now all the joints and lubrications and different things are susceptible to essentially dust and grit and grime. Gosh, I think what we're saying is that the machines are scary because they have like mm -hmm. steel and titanium structures. So like mm -hmm. we've, we know how hard metal is versus like our bones mm -hmm. and our skin. And so we're like, oh, robots are super strong. But actually like humans have their own distinct advantages like That's like right. for example for example like a robot uh, machine what is it operating off of like in terms of energy it could be it could have some type of combustion is operating off of oil mm -hmm. it could be battery powered which it, it, which the power then comes from solar or or oil or from coal or something but if you take out any of those three sources then it's toast like it's a very short amount of time in which the entire robot army is just out of energy cannot operate right. whereas humans you we can we can eat a raccoon we we can eat a i don't know leaves or whatever like we we are surprisingly yeah. survivable in these situations yeah because our digestive system is quite adaptable the main things we need is oxygen and clean water but even even clean water if you dial that back you say okay long term like we need to survive for the next 5 years at least i can drink dirty water it might not be nice might have right. long-term consequences for me, but immediately I'll survive. I mean, I think that's pretty doable, like in survival situations, getting clean water. Mm -hmm. It's not easy if you don't know what you're doing, but I, I mean, you can watch survival mm -hmm. people, they figure it out very easily. Right. Um, whereas robots, they need like, I need this oil. Like, oh, well, where does the oil come from? Well, it's a petroleum byproduct. Like, now we need to go yeah. dig for oil. Yeah. Like, ah, so here you go, here's oil. Oh, that's the, that's the wrong viscosity and different like I need this very specific type of oil. I don't That's have right. that on hand. Convert it. Drink it. I can't convert it. Can't. Right. Whereas we drink like yeah. a, a, you know, like a slurry of sludge, of you know, carbohydrates and protein, and our body just pulls them apart and distributes <laughs> it around the body as needed. That's like right. what? What is a protein shake? It's like a mixture of a bunch of stuff, and then your body's like, mm, I need a little bit of protein here, a little yeah, bit of salt there. there. Yeah, uh, distribute. There you go. Over no problem. There. Done. Easy. How did oh, you just take them apart? We just it just it just knew. Yeah, for like for example, gosh, even a car like you need to have the right oils in the right places. You can't just right. pour it all into one spot and let the car figure it out. Right. The car doesn't have a mouth. That's right. It has, I mean, it has a gasoline hole, but it's only gasoline. And then it has an oil hole that's mm -hmm. only oil. It has other stuff, but it's only that. Like That's right. And very, very specific fluids. Like if you put the wrong fluid in, it doesn't just like, oh, I'll suboptimally mm -hmm. run for a certain amount of time. It'll just seize up and be done. Seize and broken. Yeah. So, yeah. but but the car is like clearly much stronger than a human body, mm -hmm. but it's also fragile in different ways. In different ways, yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe from 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 the beginning of our episode today, we read that title card, card mm -hmm. where that description card, where they're like the robots have been fighting for decades. Like, okay, I guess yeah. I guess maybe actually, yeah, because maybe. it's hard to kill humans because even though like an individual human is easy to kill, it's hard to get them all dead, and then humans right. can survive in like really just weird climates, weird locations. They they figure it yeah. out. And the robots are just really sensitive to these like factories and supply chains and specific fluids and parts and and any of that gets screwed up they're struggling whereas a human like escapes to the mountains without a supply chain without factories and it's like Figured eating out. leaves and you know, berries you know yeah acorns. and it's fine yep so hmm. okay hmm. okay okay this is uh this is more more plausible than i thought yeah maybe yeah and this is the ending scene where Sarah Connor is heading off to the storm. Mm -hmm. You know, the storm's like a like a literal but also a metaphor for the oncoming robot storm. That's right. So this is actually nanoparticles, mm. little nanites. Oh, okay. That's false. That's false. Pretending That's to be false. a cloud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was seeded, like in the Matrix. This is the first cloud seed that was effective. The robots is... shot their seed into the sky, and then it became nanites. And that starts the war. Yep. Okay. So, what will the machines do next? And uh, do the machines know about the progress of the Model 101? Ooh, back, good in, question. back in time? Or how does Kyle Reese play into it? Like, 
They don't know. They're not going to get any Intel briefs from the past, are they? I mean, I guess. So, okay. So the, the machines throw Arnold, the Model T 101 back in the past, and he never comes back back to the future because mm -hmm. one they don't have like a teleport like a time a forward time traveling machine right mm -hmm. but he does report into the future in that they his body's left there right so right. if in the future the machines are like yeah this body is recovered and the uh, and john connor's still around mm -hmm. then i guess that's the answer right that's the answer is the t101 didn't work mm -hmm. right but then wouldn't there be like a sudden so they're on the timeline where they send the T1, the, the one, Model 101 back. And then as soon as it's effective or ineffective, there's immediately time jump to a new timeline. And then when they look back, they see the wrong things. Or maybe they see so the I right guess, things. I guess like, if, or if yeah, because if, if you change events in the past, then your future doesn't play out the way that it did, which means you immediately jumped to the timeline in which the things in the past mm -hmm. happened or didn't happen. But mm -hmm. then you also have no recollection of the things that you did in that previous timeline because right. you never need to do them anymore. Right, because it's a totally new timeline. So they're jumping around timelines or something. This is why time travel is very challenging to think about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but fun. And so, so is the war actually caused by Sarah Connor? So she now is like preparing for fighting against the machines and then maybe that's actually what causes it. All right, so she's in this like time loop, which is part of this machine war time loop. Maybe she's part of the cause. Maybe the way for her to not cause a machine war is just like, eh, I don't believe it. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, I just won't. I won't train my son. I'll let him be a loser. And then what about the, the butterfly effect? Like, any little change in the timeline will have massive co consequences down the line. We know this because of the butterfly effect. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically, we made a huge number of changes with Kyle Reese and with the Terminator. So we're on, even if, no matter what happened, we're on the new timeline, right? Yeah, unless unless the only other way I can see around that is if the, all those things that we did are actually what causes the timeline. That's right. And in so fact, then, they are necessary components of getting Kyle Reese sent back. So this is the deterministic solution to all this complication is that it's all baked in anyway. There's nothing we can do. Which means don't do anything. Which means don't do anything. Which which means you're going to do what you would have done anyway. Yeah. Go get yeah. a drink. Go to the bar. Hang out. Whatever. Fine. If, you, if, <laughs> if that's what the timeline has in store for you, go do that. Right. The timeline needs me to smoke a bunch of weed. Then you will have had no choice but to do that. But to do that. <laughs> The robots from the future tell me to. Yes. All right. See you next time. Terminator next time. 2. Terminator 2.